income tax 2022 2023 other income part number two tax software example problems let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation here we are in our example form 1040 using Lacert tax software to populate it. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also find the form 1040 related schedules and forms at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting out with the single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents. We got the 100,000 W-2 income, 12,950 on the standard deduction, getting us to the taxable income. 87,050. If we mirror that in our worksheet over here, 100,000 in our formula, standard deduction 12,950, 87,050. We have then the tax being calculated by the software on page two. There's the tax calculation, 15,000 withheld, gets us to the 226 here, and that's mirrored over here, 226. Now we're gonna focus on the other income. So back to page one, we're on the income line. We've been going into the schedule one, schedule one, and looking at the other income lines, remembering that basically the IRS says everything needs to be included in income unless we say otherwise. So if there's no other form for it, then likely you might need to include it in this other income schedule one line. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Number eight, as you think about this line, note you want to be very careful about the types of incomes be very careful that might be subject to self-employment tax which is another big hit another big burden in which case you might have to report it on like a schedule c or something like that and those which are not subject to self-employment tax which in that case uh, you'd be more likely to have them over here on line number eight we're also going to be mindful of the fact that if we get a 1099, we probably need to put something somewhere that is equivalent or greater than the 1099 because the IRS has the 1099 and so we need to keep that in mind. So we went through a few of these in a prior presentation. Let's look at 8R uh, down here. We'll just do a couple more. If you got a scholarship or fellowship grants uh, not reported on a Form W-2. So there's questions with regards to scholarships and, and fellowships in, in terms of now you've got money and it's kind of like free money so you think it might be included in income because it's, it seems like a type of of inflow but it would also be one of those things you would expect the iris might uh, exempt so you might have if you spend it in the proper way be able to be exempt from it so enter the amount of scholarship and fellowship grants not reported on w-2 however if you were a degree candidate include on uh, line 8 are only the amounts you used for expenses other than tuition and course related expenses so you might want to make sure that you're spending the money that your grant money or whatever in a way that's going to be maximizing your benefits and remember there might be a difference between the definition of how you can expend your expenses here which might be a little bit more stringent than possibly if you're looking at some of the education credits like a hope or lifetime credit and trying to qualify there so for example amounts used for room board and travel must be reported on line uh, 8r Okay, so you would think that if obviously the tuition would be the, 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 the solid one, the solid bet there. So if it's on the W-2, then you would expect that it would already be included in the W-2 and, and therefore excluded from box one of that W-2. And so you, wouldn't, you would think you wouldn't have to do anything because your employer was the one that had to do it there. If not, then you might have to include it uh, here. And so I could say, you know, 15... Uh, thousand let's say and bring that over so now that's where it's going to populate and it'll go down here to the 15,000 and then populate to the form 1040 as we would expect and there's the 15,000 bringing the taxable income up to 15 uh, 150 and so I won't go to the excel sheet because I think these are fairly straight straightforward 
uh, examples. So there's one. Let's just take a look at a couple other ones. If I go to uh, the schedule again, and let's go to number T. So it says uh, pension or annuity from a non-qualified, hold on, that's not the one I was looking at. Let's just go to U here, wages earned while incarcerated. So hopefully you're not incarcerated or anything, but if you're dealing with someone who's incarcerated and has wages while incarcerated, we might have to report those. So just to check those out, I'm gonna say, let's jump to, and so obviously those would go here. So there's just an example of that line. Again, these wages then would be summed up on down below, pull over to page one of the form 1040. And then if you go through this list of items up top and you think that something is included in income, but there is no location for it, then you might go to the other income down here. And remember, as you do that, the question is always gonna be, is this something that's subject to self-employment tax? In which case you, would, you might have to report it on a schedule C or something. Otherwise you might have to include it down here as uh, the other income and some items for that reimbursement of other amounts received for items deducted in an earlier year, such as medical expenses, real estate taxes, general sales tax, home mortgage interest, and so on. So again, you have another scenario, which is similar to the situation we talked about having income related to the, the, the uh, state tax. So if you got a state tax deduction, you've got the tax refund up top because if you got a deduction for the state tax in the prior year and you got a benefit from it, which would only happen if you had a schedule A and you were able to get the benefit from that deduction in the prior year, but then they refunded it. Then we have that scenario, which is quite common, which is why it's on number one of the schedule one, which is that you might have to include that refund in income. The rationale being the only other thing you could do would be go into the prior tax return and amend it. So you don't want to go prior tax return and amend it. You'd rather kind of fix it going forward here. You have a similar scenario with these other kind of reimbursements because the concept would be if you got a benefit from it last year, a deduction, and then they reimbursed something that you got a benefit from from a reduction, a deduction, then you can either amend the prior year tax return, which would be quite tedious, or you could try to, if they allow you to fix it going forward, that would be the easier thing to do. Those things are easy to do. We got reemployment, trade adjustment, assistance, lost on certain corrective distributions, dividends on insurance policies, recapture of the charitable contribution deduction, a couple of those recapture items. So those are, those are the main ones down here. We got the taxable distributions from the Coverdale uh, education savings account or equivalent tuition distributions from these accounts may be taxable if, so that would be a situation where you had those benefit kind of investment plans that might be subject to tax. And if they were subject to tax, then that might be the way you'd have to put them down here on uh, on the bottom line. So that's the, the, the catch all if, no, if there's no other location to find it. But again, the general idea, and I'm gonna stop saying again, I'm sorry for saying again so many times. I'll apologize again for saying again so many times again. But uh, the general rule is that you wanna make sure that you're taking into consideration whether or not you are subject to the self-employment tax. Uh, if you are, then you might have to do a schedule C or something like that. If you're not, then you would expect it possibly to be over here somewhere in the other income. If there's no line item for it, then you've got the catch-all category down here at the other income line Z.